Hi, I'm Mark Edwards. Thanks for joining us on Tech24. Coming up... In a galaxy not so far away, one dominant force controls all. Apple's iPad is usually the first thing people think of when you say a media tablet. No one has come close to breaking their stranglehold on this lucrative market. However, Google and Microsoft are now firmly on the hunt. We discuss their brand new product offerings and the future of the tablet wars. And on Test24 this week, we'll be looking at intelligent water bottles and water purifiers. See you later, bacteria and viruses. Clean water for all. Now, the war of the smartphones is still raging, but the big guns are also now fighting on another front. The lucrative and burgeoning tablet market. Seems that every company wants a chunk of the iPad's success and utter dominance of this sector. Not a surprise when you think that media tablet sales are set to reach 119 million units worldwide this year, up almost 100% since 2011. Last week, Microsoft unveiled its Surface tablet, shopping the public, which had no idea these devices were coming. Now Google claims its new Nexus tablet will rival dominating and upcoming tablets in the market. Now, as always, we've got the man whose name is synonymous with all things technological or technology digital guru, Eric Olander. So, Eric, tell, tell us about these, new t these two new offerings. Well, it's been a big week in the tablet market. First of all, let me just rephrase that. There is no tablet market. There's an iPad market, and everybody else is really just, you know, picking around the crumbs. So, what these two companies are doing, both Microsoft and Google, is trying to find another way to attack and get into Apple and get a piece of that. So, let's start with the Surface. Surface is this device we don't know much about. Microsoft had this really elaborate launch in Los Angeles. They didn't let any of the tech journalists kind of touch and play with it for too long. So we just don't know what it is. We don't know the pricing. We don't know the release date. But really where Microsoft is going with this is the enterprise market. What they're concerned about is BYOD. BYOD is bring your own device. More and more people are bringing their iPhones into work. They're bringing their Android phones into work. This is where App, uh, Microsoft really wants to stop and try and limit the damage that Apple's been doing to them so that companies already have Microsoft enterprise software on their systems by having a Surface tablet they can say ease, simplicity, and of course security. But Microsoft, I mean, so it's a big gamble. It's a gamble they probably have to take, but it's still a huge Massive. gamble to go up against. I mean, you're going up against Apple. There's, there, there isn't, and you think of tablets, you only think iPad. That's it. Now, the gamble is on a number of different fronts for Microsoft. On the one hand, it is against Apple. On the other hand, you know, they don't have a great track record when it comes to building hardware. So you have the Zoom, which was a disastrous failure, but you also have Xbox, which has been a tremendous success. So where does Microsoft fit with this tablet on that scale between really disaster and success? We don't know. The biggest risk for Microsoft now is that it's getting into the hardware business and the software business combined, and it's competing against the very people that it sells its main product, its software to. So the OEMs, those original equipment manufacturers, that's who they're competing against now, and that's a big risk. Who exactly, then, is this going to be really aimed at? Well, that's the thing. I think that Surface might be going after the uh, the enterprise market. That's probably the natural fit for it. So companies buying up, you know, thousands, millions of these tablets to give to their employees. Now, let's talk a little bit about Google and the Nexus. That is not even competing with Apple. That's really going much more after the Amazon Fire, the Kindle apps. And the idea here is that you're creating a closed system around a shopping ecosystem. So now what Google wants you to do is buy their products into the Google Play marketplace, just like Apple wants you to buy into iTunes, and just like Amazon wants you to buy into Amazon Prime. So we're seeing these closed environments. That's the big trend here. Would you, would you, I mean, would you, do you think you would purchase? I mean, we don't know exactly what's coming up. But, I mean, you've got your iPad. Are you, is anything going to tempt you away from that? Well, two things. One, Microsoft must make its device cheaper and have some differentiating factor from the iPad to make it better. There has to be a really great reason for you to move away from the iPad. The only other competitive advantage that, say, the, the Nexus 7 has is that it's at $199. So it's an entry-level tablet. You know, an iPad, when you walk out the door, it's 499 euros, 499 dollars. By the time you add on tax and accessories, it's 600 dollars. I'm not going to give my 10-year-old kid a 600 dollar computer. So 199 might be a good price point for things like the Nexus 7. So price really going to be key. Price on that. makes a big difference. Eric, thank you so much. I think you've uh, helped a lot of people out there to uh, to decide what they're going to be purchasing next. But coming right up, we've got Test Twenty Four. Now, the average human being drinks around 1.9 liters of water a day. 
but in some situations and in certain parts of the world, maintaining that average can be quite tricky. Well, hopefully not for much longer. Purifying water thanks to intelligent technologies, that's the idea behind my bottle and the pocket from Katadin. Filters 25 times more powerful than those traditionally used on the market. Eric, tell us all about these systems. This is the Katadine or Katadin, if you want to say it properly. <laughs> uh, this is their water bottle. Now, they've got a whole system around this bottle. Okay, it looks like a normal just exercise water bottle, but inside what you're going to see here is this filter. And this filter is the magic sauce for this, uh, for Katadine. Now, a billion people a day go without clean water. And that clean water can be infected with all sorts of parasites. It can be infected with all sorts of, you know, dangerous diseases like cholera and whatnot. So the idea for this is to be able to take water, up to 100 liters can be filtered through this bottle right here. And then what you do is then you clean out for most of the parasites. Now, as I said, a billion people a day are, are go without clean water. This product is not meant for them, and I'll tell you why. Number one, it is very, very pricey. This alone, this bottle right here, with the filters, are 49 euros. That is very, very expensive for the developing world. Now, what the developing world is getting out of these technologies is something like this. And this is their other part of their product. This is a two-part, looks a little bit like a strange contraption here, but you put this part this into the water, and then you pump. Now, this is 329 euros. This is being sold to NGOs in working in, in developing countries. It's also being sold to the military as well, the United States military and other militaries around the world for them to have purified water when they're out on, on assignment on missions. Again, this is very expensive, not because of the rubber tubes here or the plastic, but because of the filters that are here. So, I mean, when can we expect this? This is great, you know, if you're going off on a hike, the water bottle or something, or, you know, it's good for, as you said, first world countries. That's right. When can we expect to see these things at a manageable price, uh, you know, wait, in a, in, a, in a third world country to, to help out. I mean, well, what happens, this is following the normal technology curve, and the normal technology curve says that things like this are very expensive in the beginning. Just think back to the first laptop computers, the first cell phones were very, very expensive in the beginning, and then they get cheaper and cheaper. But at the end of the day, this is not going to be the product that solves the, the water problem for a billion people, in part because this is really an individual solution. 100 liters, as you said, 1.9 liters per day per person. That's really, that's not going to go very far. So when we're talking about cleaning up water for people, we're really talking about massive infrastructure, sewage systems, water for purification systems for large cities. This is really meant for a small individual or community basis. So hopefully the, pr the prices will go down. The prices eventually will go down. Eric, thank you so much. Uh, as always, as every week, you've been an absolute star and thanks for helping us out on Test24. Now that's just about it from the Tech24 team for now. Do get in touch with us via the social network. The URL will be coming up on the corner of your screen. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at TechF24. And this week, we leave you with Singapore's latest attraction, Gardens by the Bay. Just opened its doors last week, and the 618 million euro super park houses a collection of rare plants and 18 super trees, which are giant structures meant to mimic real life trees by providing shade from the sun whilst also capturing the sun's energy using solar panels at the top of the trees. The 80 super trees range in size from the tallest at around 50 meters. Our Singapore's latest project, part of a vision to embrace its notion of being a city in a garden. Enjoy. <laughs>